better daily. When we work hard in our minds, bodies, and our spirits to become 1% better every single day. Download the app and join our Betterment family at betterdaily.live to catch the video version of these podcasts. Here's your host and my dad, Alex Van Houten. What's up, Betterment family? This is Alex Van Houten in Better Daily Live. Happy Monday. It's Mindset Monday, and I'm super excited about today's mindset. Today's mindset is don't be a zombie. (laughs) I'll expand that in just a second. I did want to say that we have three more days until the Better Man Challenge registration closes. If you or somebody you know is looking to improve themselves and start working toward betterment as a man in the areas of mind, body, and spirit, this is the challenge for them. I'm going to put the link in the description below. Right now, we have eight brave souls who are going to be moving forward in this challenge, and we've got a few more spots left. If there are any last-minute registrations, we're going to kick things off next Wednesday, and that'll be the start of the challenge, but registration closes in three days. So that said, today's mindset is don't be a zombie. Now, something you might not know about me, I love zombie movies. (laughs) Zombie, I'm, I'm kind of obsessed, actually. And you can ask just about anybody who's close to me. Zombies are something very interesting to me. I think Resident Evil was the first zombie movie I watched, and I was probably like 12 or 13, something along those lines. And then I was captivated by the idea. You know, it's blood, guts, and gore, and there's a survival element to it. Most of them are action movies. Some of them have love stories involved. And I think uh, there's World War Z. Brad Pitt saves the world because he breaks into a facility and figures out that if everybody has a mild version of a virus, those zombies won't chase after you, right? And then there are a couple actual series that are about zombies. The, uh, uh, was it the Walking Dead series? That was a really interesting one. It got really dark after about three seasons, so it was more about exploring what terrible governmental structures humanity can can construct from nothing <laughs> in a brutal environment like a zombie apocalypse. But I recently saw on Netflix, they have this new uh, All of Us Are Dead is the new zombie series, and I always like checking out what the newer versions of zombie stories are because it's interesting to see what ways we take that as a culture. I was curious as a kid about the idea that the world kind of falls apart and then who are we? What happens? You know, the the civilized facade kind of melts away and and people are fighting over Twinkies and stuff. And so that that was really interesting to me as a kid outside of the, you know, idea of running away and and what would happen if if zombies took over? Maybe I would post up at Walmart. I had this elaborate plan when I was like 17. I was like, I got the zombie thing kicked. You know, I'd hang out in, in Walmart. There were these rafters up top and you could tie ropes across. That's in my thought. You go to the camping section, you tie ropes across, and then you have an unlimited supply or nearly unlimited supply, depending on how many survivors you had with you of food and water and stuff. And so Walmart was my, was my safe haven. <laughs> Anyway, what the heck does this have to do with Betterman Alex? Today's mindset is don't be a zombie. And as I've gotten older, one of the things that I'm really interested in in this whole zombie culture is actually zombies as a metaphor for what happens in life when people lose their divine spark. So, and I'm going to back that up and, and talk about science for a second. So in in neuroscience, one of the things that we're learning is that there is a part of you that's conscious, that makes decisions. You can call that executive functioning, right? Your your frontal lobes, that's right here, right behind your skull in the front. Your frontal lobes are responsible for complex problem solving, uh, decision making. If you have something you have to decide on, there's something in your life where you could go this way or that way and you have to decide which way you're going to go there's executive functioning. And that's something you actually have some control over. Not a lot of control, but a little bit of control. And in neuroscience, they've tried to quantify that. How much of us is conscious? How much of us is something we can be aware of, something we can control, right? How much of us is there? And then how much in in our minds, how much of it is on the back burner? How much of it is unconscious? How much is going on back here that we don't even attend to, that we don't have control over even if we wanted to? And it's really interesting. They've actually come to the, and and this is a really hard number to quantify. Some say a little more, some say a little less. They've actually come to a consensus, and that is that about 1% of you is conscious, and the other 99% of you is not. 
Like, if that doesn't blow you away, it really should. Okay, and, and think about this with me for a second. So, for instance, I'm talking to you. I have conscious control over whether or not I use my hands to talk to you. But if I'm not thinking about it, my hands are going to do weird stuff anyway. <laughs> you see, if you're watching the video version of this, you know Coach Alex just can't put his hands down. I can. I can, oh, I can hold them at my sides and talk to you. But it's really hard. I have to think about that. So in the 99% of me that's unconscious, part of that is my hands move. How about a different example? If you ate dinner yesterday, you're not in a fasted state right now, you ate dinner yesterday, then your body is currently undergoing a digestive process. Peristalsis is the process by which your smooth muscle moves food all the way through the digestive tract. There are digestive enzymes that are being excreted at just the right time for you. And that's all controlled in that 99% of you that you don't have control over. You're not thinking like, okay, now bile salts, go. Like, okay, now let's move that about four inches down the digestive tract, go. You don't think that. It just happens. Same thing with your heartbeat. There are some people who, through a meditative practice, can actually control their heartbeat a little bit. They can slow things down. They can speed things up. But for the most part, your heart just beats. just does its thing. You don't have a lot of control over that. In fact, you have barely any control for that. That's part of that 99%, right? Or what about emotions? You will often hear people say things like, you can't control how you feel, but you are responsible for how you respond to that, right? There are things you could do when you're angry that would be better than if you did other things when you were angry, right? Then you can't control if you're sad about something, but you can control how you express that and whether or not you make everybody around you miserable in the process of being sad. You can't control being in pain sometimes, but you can control how you react and respond to that. And so that's the idea is that there's this 1% conscious part of you that can make decisions. And the other 99% is, is really just there. It's just functioning, you know, kind of like the chickens in my backyard. They're following instincts, man. They're just doing, they're doing their thing. They're not making decisions. They're not like, gee, you know, today I could go to that side of the field or I could go to that side and hang out with my friends. So what, what do I want to do? Chickens don't do that. They don't contemplate. They don't think they don't make decisions. They're instinctual. The 99% of us that's subconscious is the 100% for a chicken, right? <laughs> with their tiny little pea brains. And they do some amazing things with that 100% unconscious. So this idea that you have a very small portion of you that is capable of making a difference today, that's capable of doing something that is out of the ordinary, that's not on a constant trajectory, right? So imagine uh, there's somebody in our, our community right now who's going through a very difficult and stressful time. And, and this is requiring a lot of energy of this person, a lot of, a lot of mental thoughts, been going on for months. It's exhausting. There's a light at the end of the tunnel, but in the meantime, it's very difficult, right? What if that person today is like, you know what? I got all this going on and the 99%, the subconscious part of me can keep this going. I can keep putting things together and I can keep arranging things and I can keep showing up and, and doing what everybody needs me to do. But, but this person comes across somebody at the gym that they haven't seen in a while and they stop and they say, you know what? I'm going to go talk to this person real quick. Hey, how are you? I haven't seen you in a while. How's your family? And let's say this other person's having a hard time. And so they decide in this moment to listen. I'm going to listen. I'm going to ask some questions. I'm going to be 100% present with that 1% part of me that is conscious. I'm going to be really present right now. And when that happens, what's cool is you go from the automaton part of you, the part of you that is kind of just going with the flow, doing what needs to be done, almost like the mundane things in life. You go from that part of you to using the divine spark, using the thing that is on purpose and attentive because it might actually change things for a person to be able to, to tell you what's going on in their life, right? Or how about this? How about before lunchtime today, pick up your phone and text somebody who you are grateful for, what you're grateful for about them. Hey, you're on my mind. I was thinking about you. You're on my heart. And, and I'm so thankful for you. Here's why. Thank you for being you. And if it's appropriate, I love you. That's 1%. That's not being a zombie. See, in the zombie movies, it's it's like this viral outbreak, right? And, and people get bit or whatever. Something's in the water or something's in the air and they die. And then they come back to life, come back to life. But what is a zombie? A zombie 
is an unconscious human. That's what it is. And they roam around and they eat things and sometimes they're scary and driven by rage if you like the 28 Days Later zombies. Uh, but they're unconscious humans. And we're not too far from that at any given time. I'm not saying that, you know, there's a viral outbreak and zombies are real. What I'm saying is we as human beings are not too far from being completely unconscious human beings. We're not too far from that. In fact, you might have gone through seasons in life where that was the case. And people will say things like, I woke up. You know, there was a time in my life where I was doing X, Y, Z, and then I woke up and I did this instead. That's what they're saying. There's a part of a person that can wake up, that can say, hey, I'm going this way. And this is the way the energies of my life are carrying me and my instincts and my habits and all this stuff. But no, but I need to do something else instead. And I'm, I'm telling you that this is the mindset today. Don't be a zombie. I really want you to look at the things in your life where you find yourself just letting the flow of things go. This happens in nutrition a lot. Like, oh, I just ate that because it was there. Or, oh, you know, this is the way it's always been. Or, oh, that's what we always have for dinner. And you know, go fast forward like five years and then and then think like, okay, well, how did that serve you? It didn't. What if you used your 1% today to put a spotlight on that thing that matters and made a conscious decision to change it? Don't be a zombie. Don't be a zombie. There's a really cool quote from Braveheart where the princess or whatever is trying to convince William Wallace that he doesn't need to die today because she doesn't want him to die. He's, he's set to, you know, be disemboweled and decapitated. Speaking of zombies, that's a good way to kill him. If you're, <laughs> you need to know <laughs> in the movies, you got to attack the head and they, they shut down, but he's, he's about to die. And so she's like, but I don't want you to die. And he said, look, every man dies, but few men truly live. And I think it's an echo of that, that zombie idea. Because, I mean, look around. Next time you're out in public, look around. Starbucks, or I don't know why you'd be at Starbucks, but Walmart. Anyway, I don't care where you are. Just look around. Look around. Look at how many people are in their phones and not attending to their children. Look at how many people aren't having conversations across the table from each other when they're out to breakfast. Look around at how easy it is to be a zombie in this moment. And use that 1% of you decide not to be. And see what happens. Don't be a zombie. All men die, but few truly live. And I hope that challenges you this week. Good morning, Joel. Thanks for joining me, man. I know you're not a zombie. <laughs> Keep up the good work. Guys, this has been Alex Van Houten in Better Daily Live. Thank you so much for joining me for Mindset Monday. Tomorrow is Nutrition Tip Tuesday. We're going to go through a nutrition item to help you on your journey. Until then, it's just 1%. You got this. Thank you for joining us for your 1% Better today. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. Leave us a raving review to tell others how Better Daily has helped you in your journey. If you want more Better Daily, download our app and join our Betterment family at betterdaily.live. Use code POD to get 25% off your subscription. That's P-O-D, all caps, to save 25% on your subscription. We all have a cross to carry. It's later when we do it together. Go to betterdaily.live today.